everyone welcome to the channel it's great to have you with us i hope that you are well apologies for the late start i am home alone this evening with my children so i've had to pop them off to bed um so it just took me a little while to get them settled but they're settled for now so we'll see how this evening goes um if need be it might be a short video today but we'll just play it by ear and enjoy finishing up this page so we are working in anastasia ellie calderiva's mysteria using prismacolor premier pencils and i've already shown you how i approach portraits and how i do hair with polychromos and now i'm going to be doing the cicada and the wild rose so i think i'm going to start with the wild rose first i'm just pulling up some pictures at the moment and i'm thinking of doing a white center and then pushing it out pink on the edges i think that could be quite nice so um either that i'm not sure if this is the right one though i'm just trying to find the right the right picture or alternatively we could do very dark pink so i quite like the white center and then going out it's just the wild roses i'm pulling up have got a little bit more petals to it than what i'm seeing here Right, I think we'll do a pale pink into a dark pink. I've found a bit of a picture here we can use. Okay. Let's have a look. Hi Kenny, how are you? Hi Brittany. It's great to have you. I hope you've both had a good start to your week. Okay, so the picture I've pulled up has quite a light pink in the center. We've got green here in the middle with a bit of yellow. So we're going to definitely need some yellow chartreuse, and probably even some chartreuse or spring green. Right, so I want white. I'll do pink rose. So I'm just going to bring in my pencil. <laughs> Okay, let's have a look. I want pink rose into a blush pink. A pink and then we'll go into a pro process red and a magenta so we'll have quite a lot of colors here um, i'm not sure how we'll do the shadows yet i'll give it a think Okay, then we want spring green, a yellow chartreuse, and a regular chartreuse, and then some sepia, which I was using earlier, somewhere here, yeah, there we go. Okay, and a blending pencil, all right, and we'll see how we get on. Oh, 
thank you, Kenny. She is looking very pretty. I am very pleased with how she's turning out. Sometimes they just work. Okay, I'm going to zoom you in to the flower. Okay, there we go. So, how was your weekend? Did you have a good weekend? I do prefer my pencils quite sharp. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pink rose and I'm going to bring it in very gently. I don't want to do this too quickly because I do want to try and get this. So here it's going to be quite wide. I think for these stamens we will probably use a a gel pen. Oh dear. <laughs> Every time I look at this page, I keep seeing more hair that has been hidden. Like uh, here, there's like bits of hair there. And I think this is hair along in here. Oh gosh, I tell you, it does my head in. Okay, so we're going to need some greys if we're going to create a bit of a white center there so we want some celadon green because in here this is shadow so the white isn't going to look white it's going to have this shadowy look to it Oh my goodness, a hurricane! Wow! Yeah, they probably could just colour over it. Is everyone in your area okay though after the hurricane? And how badly was the damage? That's quite worrying. Okay, so in the center here, we're going to come in with our yellow chartreuse. Oh my goodness, wow, flooding and mudslides, that's crazy hectic.
what um, level of hurricane was it? I mean, as far as I know, scientists and the, and the weather people, climatologists, they do put the gradings or levels onto hurricanes. Hey Shani, how are you? Hi Rebel, thanks for joining, it's great to have you. How was your week? Well, your weekend. Um, if my sense of time is a bit warped, please would excuse me. <laughs> it's been a bit of a long day. Okay, well that's, I'm glad it was downgraded to a 1 and it wasn't that, but I am sad to hear of the damage and the, un the events of it. Hi Penny, how are you? So on the rosebud, I'm going to actually kind of make it almost the opposite and make it dark going into light, so like pink into white, the inverse. I find sometimes I have to pick the colors. So I use a reference photo to help me pick colors and develop a color scheme. But then I tend to follow the illustrator or the artist's line art. Hi Jodie. Hi Katrina.
Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like it. I'm hoping to finish it today. Um, and I did find a nice picture of a cicada. Um, so we can do the wings almost like transparent. But hopefully we can get it done. I actually really have enjoyed colouring him. think that my video might be behind a little bit So I saw that um, Kari Rosanis is bringing out a new book on dark fairy tales. So what are your thoughts on Kirby's new book coming out? Is it, is it something you're hoping to get? Are you excited for it? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, the challenge with the YouTube lags is when I read your comments, I'm not sure if I'm behind <laughs> because of the video. Um, it's okay. It's, it's fine. We can deal with it. It's not the end of the world. But I have noticed lately that the YouTube lags um, have definitely gotten worse, as you say. And today's lag seems to be quite bad. Almost a good few minutes behind. Whereas previous videos, they haven't been this far. But never mind, nothing much we can do. Oh, that's so cool, um, Dodie, that you're keen to see his new book. Hi, Wilson. Yeah, Shani, I'm also curious to see his take on them, although I will be honest, the cover does put me off a little bit, my dripping heart. Um, but I will definitely look at the flip through when it comes and then decide. I mean, to be, f to be fair, if you go to the and read the original fairy tales, um, especially if you go towards like the Brothers Grimm and that sort of thing, they are not this Disney style. They they are very different. I mean, I think when Disney did their take on fairy tales, it really did change up the way we know and it made it cute and lovable and you know, fairies became these lovable creatures and associated with all this pos positivity. But in the original fairy tales, they and in folklore, they're not actually 
<laughs> as nice as Disney makes them out to be. So I'm curious to see how he he brings out his take on the fairy tales. I just hope they're not too dark and creepy. <laughs> exactly, real fairy tales aren't fluffy and cute. I mean, I remember reading very uh, about four or five different versions of The Little Mermaid growing up. And I always preferred the Disney ones because they were cute and fluffy. And yet, as I've gotten older and explored fairy tales but more, I've realized that actually the ones that were varied and didn't have the happy ending were actually more true to the actual original tales than what Disney made them out to be. Oh well, thanks Brittany, at least we've got a year or two, to, well two years, to anticipate this new release, <laughs> this new Kirby book. Hi Carly, how are you? <laughs> oh, you're still gonna buy even if you don't like it. Yeah, I can see how that is easy. I mean, I'm starting to toy with the idea of actually buying Mythic World and Alien World. Um, just because I do really enjoy Kirby's work and coloring in his books are really easy, not difficult. But we'll see. <laughs> you have to for the connection. <laughs> Thanks, Kali. I am not too bad. Um, just really busy lately, but it's okay. We'll we'll get there. Yeah, I was in two minds about Alien World because of the way Kirby does it and also 
Um, but then I like the fact that Alien, you can make it any way you like. So, yeah. I showed it to my boys though, and they were, oh, mom, this is so cool. <laughs> Different interests for different people, I guess. I'm glad, Kali, that your part of California is drying up. Oh, wow, five pounds, that is good. Exactly. If we don't end up using it, we can pass it on. And there's always going to be somebody who can use it. I kind of figured I would, if I get Alien Worlds and Mythic World, it will be kind of like a shared book between me and my boys. And then I can color the pages I like, they can color the pages they like. I think I might actually ignore all these lines. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> your books and supplies go for a walk <laughs> uh, I ended up buying my littles um, well they're not so little anymore I mean, my youngest is nine next month but I, I did buy them a couple of sets of pencils and then the Ohuhu markers I've got I actually bought for them and I dip into them every so often and then normally what happens with my coloring books, um, if they are interested, they'll ask, and then I will make a copy. I'm a bit too precious with my books to have them color in <laughs> inside. It's like, no, 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 that's mine. Um, you can have a copy. I'm happy to photocopy it and you can color it in and we can share it that way, but you're not coloring in my books. I don't know the Art and Fly colored pencils. <laughs> Your minis aren't so many either. <laughs> yeah, my eldest is 13 in December. And honestly, it's like, where did the time go? So I'm, I'm actually anticipating being an emotional wreck by the end of November because I don't know, <laughs> when your eldest, as your eldest child ages, it's just, it's just different to when your other children age, because I think it, you experience everything first with them, so they're your guinea pigs. Um, they still obviously get really touched when my other children get older, but I do feel it more with the eldest. Uh, if you get it right with the first, you kind of know what you're doing, sort of, <laughs> with the rest. Or you, at least you know what to kind of expect. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> you're only five foot. <laughs> oh. I told my my 12 year old he's soon going to be taller I expect a huge growth spurt from the next year or so and I'm, I'm what am I I'm five foot four inches I think I'm 164 centimeters tall um so I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm just average and his mission in life right now is to be taller than mommy. Oh, well done, Brittany. I hope you enjoyed your new pencils. Let us know how you like them. Oh no. <laughs> oh well. I, I knew a girl, um, one of my friends when I was a teenager. She was really quite short and I actually met another lady who was I think under five foot. And we always said, you know, dynamite comes in small packages. So you're just dynamite in all the good ways. <laughs>
Thanks for stopping by, Rebel. Take care. downside with being short is when you have to reach up into the cupboard to get something down <laughs> and if hubby isn't around to help me I will actually grab um, bright, uh, barbecue tongs <laughs> and I'll use them to help me grab things and pull them closer so I can actually reach them or catch them as they fall. Hi Dawn, how are you? Oh, thank you. It is the magenta. So if you are wondering what this red color is, it's the magenta. And now I'm going to uh, use my pink rose. This is part of the flower, not the hair, so let me just move this part of the flower. I can't remember if I mentioned Joanna Basford's new book. So she's doing The Secret Garden again with a limited edition or as a limited edition. And then what she's going to be doing is adding a few new illustrations and she will be releasing it, I think, the end of towards the end of the year. Um, and basically in celebration of the Secret Garden, when it came out in 2013. So I'm thinking I might get that book because 
uh, Secret Garden was the first adult coloring book I bought. So sort of like sentimental reasons. I don't know if I'll color in it, but I'm definitely open to getting it. Oh, okay, cool. So it's September the 13th. That's cool. Yeah, the short, the small details of the secret garden illustrations are just really frustrating. Um, I don't mind the paper, but it, I'm not a Johanna Basford colorist. Um, I think her newer books are a bit better than her older books. But I'm hoping, you know, as I progress in coloring, I may be able to approach Johanna's books a bit differently and maybe with a bit more success. No, I haven't seen Small Victories. I think, is that her pocket size book? And I did see she was bringing out a pocket size book. So as your coloring style has evolved and changed, what sort of books do you find yourself really enjoying at the moment? So I need to lift this ink out a bit. I need a bit more white in here. And this can be a bit more white. Sometimes you have to erase to get it to look the way you want.
well, well done for colouring portraits. Oh, that's cool, Carly. You're going into more of an interest with portrait and detailed pages. I find bigger portraits are easier to colour than smaller portraits. You've got more room to define the features and play with uh, blending skin tone. Whereas the smaller they are, the less detail you actually need. So, yeah, pros and cons. <laughs> oh. Pickle, I think you're okay, <laughs> although I totally understand. Small faces have less room to muck it up. I think my light is giving quite a glare. Let's see, maybe that's better. Oh, thank you, Dawn.
They say that colouring flowers is very similar to colouring faces and portraits because it's all the layers and layers that you use to build up and creating the, sh the shadows and the highlights. The problem here with these petals is if I colour them flat, a flat gradient, they won't have much shape to them. So it, it is really interesting to try and create a little bit of dimension to them. And then if you look closely at flower petals, you often can see these very fine lines or veins on the petals. I'm not really too worried about <laughs> creating those lines, but I do want to try and create some shape here. If you could only choose three books from your current collection to keep and you have to get rid of the rest, what books would you keep? Oh, that is a good question. Oh, I'll have to think about that. <laughs> That's a very good question. Um... So if it is a collection, I would keep my um, Camus Rosanna's books because then I have a bit of like a mixture of realism and fantasy and then I've got a bit of nature. I would definitely keep my mythographic collection and probably, oh gosh, I don't know, it's like, <laughs> it's a tie. Um, I'm torn between Hannah Carlson and Eerie because I've actually really have gotten into Eerie at lately. So. Um, if it was just three books, oh no, now Kali, you're throwing a spanner in my works because I do really like Laura Markova. Oh gosh, oh, uh, three books. Um, as of today would be Romantic Country, The First Tale. Laura Markova's Fairy Touch of Magic and Mythographic Paradise. I really enjoyed those books and I really just enjoy Clara Markova's books. So if I only had her book, I would probably colour it a bit more. <laughs> You'll start over. 
I do use Prismas in Romantic Country. I really like them. Black Widow isn't too bad. I have been using some Black Widow. Um, I haven't tried anything else yet. The Prismas so far, I find they blend quite well and quickly on the paper. So, yeah, I quite... I find them quite easily but then to be really honest I find Prismas very versatile as it is so most of my coloring books I can use Prismas in without really having much issue. I mean, if I was to get rid of all my art supplies, and if I was only to keep some, I would keep my polychromos, I would keep my prismas, I'd get rid of all the other pencils, because I don't think I need them, and I would keep one set of watercolour paints, I'd keep my ink tents, and I would be happy with just that. And a white gel pen. Are you staring at the flower? <laughs> I'm glad you like it. I, <laughs> I'm still working on it. It's like, uh, okay, you just, just keep coloring. Just keep coloring. I honestly love how colouring is um, food for the soul. There's something about it that is just so soothing. <laughs> oh, thank you, Kenny. You're very kind. I really do appreciate it. I am a little bit zoned out today, a bit more than usual. We started up schooling, so... We did really well, but it was full on, so I find on, on days when it's been a bit full on and all of that, I tend to zone out quite quickly when I colour. <laughs> so then the, I can literally feel my brain just going into shutdown mode and going, oh, peace and quiet. <laughs> and just... It's just such a nice feeling because you can shut out the busyness of the world, the noise, however good, positive, negative, doesn't matter. And just, I suppose it's the mindfulness of, of coloring really kicking in.
That's why I used to draw um, as a as a kid. I'd sit in front of the coffee table. I did, my parents, my sister would watch TV, and I would allow myself to get lost in the in the arts. Sometimes I wonder if, you know, the benefits of mindfulness is a bit of a lost art in modern society. I mean, I know people bring in meditation and yoga and all that sort of stuff, and they're different strokes for different folks. But there is something really nice about switching off. See, I tell you, colouring flowers is a skill of patience. Because you really can layer and layer for days. And you can just, especially Anastasia Elicaldoriva's um, flowers and plants. The paper takes so many layers, you really could do probably a good 20 layers on here and just keep going. But there's just no end. <laughs> there is no end to this paper. Oh, thank you, Carly. <laughs> oh, well done. I'm glad you're ready to tackle your baker's rack. Exactly. Just keep layering. Just keep layering. challenge with layering so much though is it can be you know monotonous to watch <laughs> because you it's where you sometimes need the fast forward button or something like okay I've seen that part already but what's next um, and what I found because I've been actually coloring with some color alongs and I realized that it's really helpful for me personally when I'm doing a color along to watch a couple of steps and then I go back and I will have a look and then I will follow because if I don't watch a bit ahead I might miss something that I might actually want in the picture um, especially if I'm mixing and matching different tutorials to create the plant so and then you watch a little bit and, and then I would skip um, because I, I can't do a color follow a color along where I'm coloring every single step I need to see ahead then I stop the video and from there I gauge you know like okay so you've colored this section this section that pencil and then I copy it and then watch a bit more. <laughs> Your three layers and done. Oh, I wish I could be like that. <laughs> uh, I'm still too caught up in all the, the layers and the details. 
even when I was um, in school, I struggled to take notes well because I would always get caught up on the details. So I'd take my notes and eventually I would have this thing of where if I don't write everything, I'm going to get a test and the thing that I don't end up writing in my notebook is going to be the thing they will test me on. So I would have loads of homework because I wouldn't finish in time and most of my extra homework was note taking because everything was so important. It's not always a good thing being hung up on the details. Sometimes the one or two or three layered approach is so much more productive than <laughs> the 15 or 20 layers. Yeah, I've left this whole thing out. Oh dear, I will have to go back and finish that. Right, I need to move on. Because I've been colouring this for over an hour. Oh, that's only been this year, Kali. <laughs> I haven't been that organized, but I'm actually thinking that the, um, what do you call it? My color combo. So there's one of the colorists on YouTube. I can't remember who it is, but she, when she colors her pages, she actually goes and has a separate print out for all her color combos and she labels the page and she keeps it in a file of sorts or a folder of sorts and I'm actually thinking that her method is really good for color combos because then you're not restricted to a yearly or an annual journal um, whereas now my I'm worried my color combos are going to be restricted to a journal and then I'll have all these like yearly journals <laughs> and I'll be stuck. Maybe it's better to have a file. But it's a really interesting conundrum because I actually, if you were to come in and see my house, it's relatively neat, but I clutter everywhere and I have to actively keep myself decluttering but if when I was working or when I do have an office job I will keep my office spotless everything will have its place and it will be super organized but you can forget about it at home <laughs> it just doesn't happen hi Ronnie how are you I'm glad you're well.
And so I'm trying to darken up these edges and then I'm going to take my white pencil and try to blend this out. Maybe I should have done the cicada first. Never mind. Almost done with this color, and we can blend it out and these shadows, and then I think we can leave this alone. I said I wasn't going to do all the lines and look what I've done. I've done all the lines. Because I just can't help myself. <laughs> I really can't help myself. Okay, white pencil, blend it out. So how's everyone's reading going along? Last time, I think it was last week we were talking about different books, or if you've made progress in your books, if you've started a different book to read, or are you doing any other hobby besides coloring? I recently just finished reading two books on dyslexia, and I'm busy reading a, I think it's a bio, an autobiography, it's either an autobiography or a biography. But it's a very light read. It's like one of I'm suited for a teenager, really. And a preteen, young teenager could easily read it. I bought it as a reader for the boys, uh, probably for my eldest, but he hasn't read it yet. So I thought, actually, I'm going to read it. Bye Dawn, thanks for stopping by. Hope you have a good week. So here I'm using a 50% cool gray, just deepen up some of these shadows.
right so we are almost done i don't know if i'm going to actually have time to do the cicada but we will see what we can do Right, we are almost done with this. And I've left this whole <laughs> pixel here, but I will finish that off camera. Oh, welcome back. Right, so I think what we're going to do is move on to the cicada now. Um, and I will probably use gel pen for the rest of the stamens. And what we could do is use a sienna brown seed. Oops, no. We'll have to vary them a bit using some darker shades of brown, maybe some sepia here and there. I remember in school I would learn botany and I would actually draw every flower diagram. <laughs> into my notebook. You 
because it was important and I would label everything. So it was one of my favorite things to do was science and then copy across all of the diagrams. I just found it was easier to learn all the content. Fairing it at least it just makes these stamens look a little bit more interesting. You could even add glitter to it if you wanted to. I'm just not sure if I put a glitter gel pen and then add glitter on top if it will look too busy in two months. There we go. And then we need gel pens. So if we do a very glittery like color. So if we do like this goldy, coppery, glittery color. <laughs> thin lines does anyone else find gel pens difficult to draw on after you've colored because I find sometimes my gel pens they stick and they don't always glide easily on top of Prismas There we go, something like that. Okay. So let's have a look at the cicada. What we're going to need is a true green. Uh, no. Yes, I think it's a true green. Let's have a look. Yes, a true green and then PC920. Um, then we're going to need some like sandbar brown and French greys and maybe some artichoke. Okay. Uh, if, no, not artichoke. We'll take it out just in case, but I think it might actually be green ochre. All right.
so I have two types of cicadas here. So when I show you my completed pages video, I will show you these images I used for my color combos. Um, and you'll see it's very interesting. So I went for the more pretty one. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let's use the artichoke first because it does have this like um, so I'm going to do oh it's tricky now okay hang on um, so it's got this like green tinge to it all along here somewhere here and like along here and then across here And then it's wings. So inside its wings, you're going to have this like blend of sienna brown inside here because it's going to, you've got to show that it's, it's seeing the hair. You don't need it to be too much. And then what we're going to do is just bring in some sepia. And I'm not going to build this up too much. So this leaf is thinning out. So technically, you're going to have like some green in here. And a bit more green along here you got to reflect whatever is happening in the background and this is just where it gets a little bit tricky And then you want to keep bringing in your stop. So just reflect a little bit. something like that and then what we can do is just use a blending pencil to blend it out you'd freak out if you had a bug on your hair yeah uh i would probably freak out too i had a wasp near me at lunchtime i was sitting outside eating my lunch and I was accompanied by a wasp, so fortunately it just 
sniffs it around and then flies off but still i'm like can you just go away i don't want a wasp near me right now please <laughs> So yeah, you really don't need to do up the, sh the layers in this section because it's transparent. You just want to give like the impression that it's it's there, and then what we're gonna do. is use this this bit here and kind of go through all of it here and again I'm not going to do to a lot of details because these wings are very transparent so you just want to showcase that they actually are there and we can bring in some grays And here we're gonna have like an artichoke. Let's use a true green. I like this green better. I, mean, I don't know if I'd want a cicada in my hair because as far as I understand they're really noisy critters <laughs> you would camouflage the bug <laughs> yeah. you should totally color it it's fun um after all, it's not on your head. That's how I'm looking at it. It's not on my head. It's not on my head. It's on her head. She's happy with a bug. I wouldn't be happy with a bug. No, thank you. If I understand it correctly, what I need to do is go over all of this like a grey pencil to show that it's really see-through or transparent. So if we pull up some of this... Oh no. <laughs> no but that won't work. So if we just do like a grey. Kind of like a grey sheen. I don't know. I have no idea what I'm doing. And then we'll put like a whole lot of glitter on the top of it. But I think that works because the grey over it. So then we're going to do artichoke along the body. So I'm going to use this as my, and then I want my sandbar brown go along here. Now its feet also have these bits of green on them, but I'm not sure you'll see them very well, so 
we can use like green ochre and some French grey. <laughs> exactly, she's oh, not again. <laughs> well, you could definitely do the leaf. Um, so if you come along here, then let's see that half of the wing you could color in hair, and then if you come this side here. So you'd have this small portion here, here, and then the rest could be leaves. So if you just follow carefully the, um, the illustration, you could easily cover it up. and then some green ochre even use sepia to really darken up your shadows. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, why do you think so many illustrators or popular illustrators actually include bugs. I mean, Hannah Carlson does, so does Anastasia Elikovareva. I mean, they seem to really like bugs. Bring this down here. <laughs> exactly. Uh, no more bugs. Maybe we should do a petition calling all artists, please stop making drawing bugs in your illustrations. I think for me, spiders and snakes are the worst. Like, I really don't want to color in spiders and snakes. All right, for his eyes, More blue. And if we're gonna color them in, let's just color them in. He 
is not a main feature in our picture, so we don't really have to worry about making it fancy. We'll give him some attention. There we go. Okay. You're <laughs> You'll be the first person to sign the petition. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to just get my Spectrum Noir Sparkle pen. And my white gel pen. Okay, white gel pen. A reflection. And then we want spectrum or sparkle pen. So, I mean, whatever sparkle embellishment you like to add. Um, I believe the Wink of Stella is good, so you could probably use Wink of Stella as well. But I like to smother it with shiny stuff. I am so glad that I did this page. What's the um, Anastasia tag again? Could you remind me, please? And I'll try and make sure I tag this picture in because it really was super fun. Put a sparkle on the eye. And we can put some sparkle in her eye. And I suppose a little bit on her lips. Not too much. Okay, I'm gonna zoom her out and let's have a look at what she looks like. This is why I love portraits, seriously. I'll try lift her up out of the glare. There you go. That's what she looks like and I think she's probably one of my best portraits. So yeah, thanks everyone. Thanks for letting me finish her and I've really, really enjoyed colouring her. Um, let me know if you want to see me do another portrait. I'm happy to do one again. I can try in a different book or the same book or if there's a specific portrait you'd like to see me try colour, let me know and I will pursue that. Thank you everyone for joining me. I'm going to say goodnight. I've really appreciated this colour along. It's been so much fun. And I don't know yet what we're going to do on Monday. Um, but yeah, thanks for hanging out. Hope you have a great week. And I will see you on Monday with a new colour along. Until next time everyone, I will see you around the channel. Have a great week. Bye for now.